It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by national champions. The Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats volleyball team completed not only a championship season, but an undefeated season as well, 38-0 and on the year. And today we have Coach Candace Motes along with Ava Joldersma and Abigail Porter, whom we will lovely call, lovingly call Abby on this broadcast today. Congratulations, first off, to all of you. Coach, talk about uh, what this experience has been to you. You've had a few hours now to, to sort it out, talk to a few people along the way. Tell us what it's like now. Well, you know, we started a season with the desire to always have it this way. But I think deep down inside, if, if you ask any coach, you know, it's, it'd take a miracle, right? Everybody's kind of thinking, well, that's just hope. But, um, but along the way, um, sometimes as things start to play out, you start to change your, your thinking some and you wonder, wow, is this going to be that special season that possibly could happen? And I think that you don't really focus on the end ever as you're going through it until you get to the end, because there's so many things in between before you get to the start to the end. But um, as as the season was playing out to me uh, and all the things that I felt like were God winks along the way for each of us, it started to become a community of belief and support of each other and a real desire of, wow, has God got something that is special and is going to do something big for us? And it, it kind of goes back to a little bit of just a journey of kind of going into the season, really surrendering the season to the Lord in a personal way of some things that I really needed to do and kind of decided that I wasn't going to do it the world's way. I was going to do it in a way that I felt like God was laying on my heart. And so as I was seeing that, I felt blessings that were coming from that. And I got a prayer, prayer support group throughout the season that prayed for us every day. And I started to feel as I could lean into them and say, hey, pray for this, pray, please pray for this. They were doing it. And it felt as if God was just creating an army around us and was going to say, I'm going to do something big because you're honoring me. That, that is fantastic. Coach, Ava, I'll start with you then. Your uh, thoughts uh, through Sioux City and then pool play into the championship and, and completing the undefeated season, of course, with the Red Banner. Yeah, I would just say we all wanted to play every last game that we could with each other. Um, the amount of joy and love on the team that we had with the people that we had, we just wanted to go as far as we could. So um, we were blessed by God to be – in the championship game and have made it all the way and then eventually won that. So I would just say God has just blessed us a little bit extra um, through our record through this entire season, but mostly through the people that he's placed on the team. Abby? Um, I would say the same thing, getting to play with this group of girls has been so fun. I haven't been on a team like it before. Obviously we're undefeated, but um, just the culture is so great. And I think that you could really see that um throughout Sioux City um last year we stopped short in the beginning uh, of opening round and we weren't able to go to Sioux City so I think having a lot of those girls come back um we all had to go further and at first we just took it a game at a time at first we just wanted to get out of um, the opening round and then it was get out of pool play and then after that it was really fun just because we were playing every game like it was our last and we knew that um, God already knew the outcome and we just had to play it. So that was really fun. And coach, I, I know that uh, you are surrounded right now by a couple of players that had some individual honors in crossroads league play this year. Of course, the player of the year in Ava and the setter of the year in Abby, but knowing that even, and I'm sure there's some more national honors along the way too. With that in mind though, I mean, playing through and, and getting into pool play, getting past that first round, getting into pool play and into the, the championship bracket. I, I know that you all, I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily easy along the way. I heard you, you all had some obstacles to overcome. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say that, you know, you're talking to two sophomores here who really last year didn't have this experience. So they were kind of freshmen going into the national tournament experience. And also two that had 
it's not limited experiences as in club play or as even in high school because maybe they had someone over them that was going to a higher level or something you know and so there was a limited opportunity and i just want to say that you you have two particular athletes here that absolutely were coachable were surrendering themselves to this cause to love the Lord. They were hardest workers on the team. They just really, they leaned into everything that was going on and really wanted to bring joy. Um, Ava's family is kind of a joyful family. And I really was impressed by them. They said her father started leaning into me a little bit of, hey, I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray for joy for you this whole season because that's when he knew I was trying to achieve and, and chase. So I'm impressed with these guys just in the sense that you take two sophomores that had huge role in this tournament. One had to really be big in putting balls away for us. We counted on many kills for her and one had to touch the ball every play to make sure it was hittable for those that were hitting and working hard to get there and just the pressure, I think, of that and to see the poise and the crowd that was around them. And then to just on top of all that pressure to get sick and start some throughout the season, about a month and a half into the season, we started to get some injuries on feet. And we were like, what is happening? We're, we have four people in boots walking around, you know, and they would wear their boots all throughout the school day and then they would come to practice take their boot off and then they put it back on and even at the national tournament everyone's walking around in boots and people were just like we were kind of like the misfit team you know like we were injured we were in a Chris trolley <laughs> as our butts broke down and we were just uh, like that team that was just creating uh, a, a stir and people were looking around and seeing us but they were seeing us for our joy and who we were we were creating um, a bond with, and it was pretty phenomenal the impact that was made by them. And so, yeah, even though they were throwing up and they were wearing boots throughout the tournament, they would take them off and be amazing people. Well, I appreciate that, and and you know, I I would ask about culture, but I think you've described it right there too. And I really appreciate joy because not only is it a fruit of the spirit, but it's also our strength. And so that uh, definitely is something to to uh, to definitely you want it to be on your side there. And uh, Ava, then I'll, I'll ask you and I'll ask both of you all in light of that. It sounds like there are a number of things you could look back on and go, wow, this was an incredible experience. Uh, of course, I, I, I will mention, as, as coach said, sophomore player of the year in the Crossroads League. 4.64 kills per set on the season, nearly three digs per set on the season, and a pretty incredible championship round, 4.92 kills per set in that Sioux City, the quarterfinals, semifinals, and, and into the championship, and, and average 5.0 kills per set uh, throughout that championship match where you go five sets. Now, I'm, I'm reading all your numbers there. I'll give you a little chance to think, Ava. So that in <laughs> mind... Is, is there a, a favorite memory then that you look back on, whether it be Sioux City or over the course of the year or riding in a trolley? What? Um, that's a hard one because there's a lot of favorite memories. Riding in the trolley, I would say, specifically at Nationals, was probably one of the funnest things <laughs> and most unexpected things um, we had. We had an amazing driver named Dave. He was super fun. He would always turn on the Christmas lights and we would play Christmas music and just ride around. Um, but yeah, I don't think I have one specific favorite memory. Uh, just being with the girls has been so much joy, so much fun. Abby, let me, let me throw some numbers out about you as well, because they're, they're big numbers too. 1,548 assists on the season. I don't know if you knew that or not, but averaging more than 12 assists per game right at that through the, the three games in the quarterfinals, semis and, and championship 11.6 percent in the five set championship match. And I think that number is a little bit skewed too, because you get to set for only 15 points. So that, that last set, you know, I, I think we should shift it and say it at least proportionally it's 12%. How about that? Officially it's not, but we'll, we'll give it to you on that. And again, setter of the year 
in the conference, uh, nearly three digs a set, 2.7 for, for the season. But one of the things that stands out, oh, by the way, you crossed the 2,000 assist mark this year too. Um, weren't, you weren't a setter in high school and, and walked onto this team. So talk about that just a little bit. And, and do you have a favorite memory? Um, yeah, coming into the team, I definitely didn't know the role that I was going to play. Um, coming in as a freshman who was a walk, like you said, I hadn't practiced with the team before, didn't really know the level that they were at, so I had no idea if I was even going to be on the court. Um, but I actually think that the people around me just um, pushed me to be better and really supported me along the way and helped me get to where I am right now. And obviously, my teammates are amazing, and they're so fun to play with, which also helps a lot. Um I don't know if I would say that I have a specific favorite memory, but at the beginning of the season, we went to the Dominican Republic for a mission trip as a team. And that was just probably one of the best experiences um, that I've had. And it was just so fun to see everyone grow in Christ and just um, get to know everyone a lot better outside of the volleyball, which helped us um, be closer as a team on the court. We're here on Midwest Sportsnet on the Summit, and it's a privilege again to get to visit with uh, players and coach from the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcat National Championship team. And guys, I'm sure that that doesn't get old hearing that time and time again. It will probably never get old. Uh, coach, let me ask you this uh, again in your 21st season. This 38-0, I'm, I'm really glad that for you also, particularly that, that you won that last match because – your record now has 667 wins, 214 losses. I would have hated if you'd ended the season at 666, so that would have been not as good there. Um, but but you get that championship, 38-0. Uh, and 0. I, Let me ask you, if, if there's not a favorite memory, is there a time you look back and say, okay, this really was a moment then where all that that you, you said to begin with, to set up the season and people praying for you and, and – uh, the joy being part of the culture, but do you look back and say, okay, I really do think maybe we can take this all the way. Uh, um, when I got things in line and really felt like um, I was trying to fight for joy because uh, there again is not enough time for you to hear all this unpacked with trying to get to a place where I could just re release because there's a lot of control thing. I, I had a, a really hard childhood with my mother having cancer. And so I kind of became the oldest child and, and I just became a control person. You know, I just had to control my sibling and, and help my dad and, and, and when my mom passed. And so there was just a lot of things that kind of created that, that characteristic in me. And then I went into coaching and I learned hard work and that was something that I learned from both my parents. And so I, I just always convinced myself that if I worked harder and I really grinded that I was going to get the results I wanted. And then I put that on other people and it became, it, it became in a very difficult time for people at times, to, like, especially when I was still young doing that and, uh, if there was anything I would want to take back from my younger years of coaching, it would be just how hard I put that pressure on everybody else. Um, but really, it was just my own impurity and my own reality of thinking this is how I needed to do it, you know. And so as I've gotten older and then more tired of that process and that journey of not being able to control things, it became a seeking of a different way and i hear and watch from my peers and my coaching in the athletics department just amazing people in there that are fighting the same thing and i i got a text from uh greg tonegal uh the day of the championship because um he was my, he's my neighbor in the athletics office he's right next to me our walls come together and he came over and he he sent me a text and he said this one word in caps. He said fearless. And I read it and I just started to cry because I was like, okay, it's going to take courage and that's going to take a surrender to the Lord to be completely fearless and to not control and to just resolve and let results be in the Lord's hands. And, but the only way that that 
a result of doing that was going to be loving and having joy. And I never cheered louder. These girls would agree. I never cheered louder in any matches than in the national tournament. I was, I just cheered everything. And when it got like when we got disastrously uh, one start 11 to one or something like that it was like i kept cool and i was like okay you know this this just happens in volleyball and we're gonna be okay and and i just found the joy that i needed and i'm living that out a little bit gave them the joy to live out what they already had inside of them and to be able to do that for them was probably my greatest joy uh being able to not take take this tournament and and make it a hard one for them, but to make it more joyful and to be praised, give praise to God for just what he was doing. And I think that's what really propelled us to just find a way to experience what God had in plan for us as we were journeying to Sioux City. And Abby and Ava, I'll, I'll ask you, Abby, I'll, I'll ask you first then. You look through this 38 and 0, and I, I know, well, I say I know, I don't know if you if you look back and can recall every single match along the way, but just from a, a numbers perspective of those 38 matches, 27 of them were sweeps. And so you you got in, took care of business, and 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 got it done. Of course, as the season gets on, and especially into the, the national tournament where it becomes, I mean, the teams get better and better along the way, playing a couple of four-set matches. Your only five-set matches of the year were in the last four matches that you played, including that championship match. So looking at that, especially in, in the, the quarterfinals on, you, you take down the defending national champions in Jamestown, uh, take down a very, very tough Eastern Oregon team, and then the, the, the number one team in the country in Northwestern. Abby, let me ask you, of, of those three uh, talk about your, you know, that experience and being out there on the court and, and going against those three teams. Yeah, it was an amazing experience just to um, play at that level and just to have everyone on the team. Um, we knew that we could compete with them and we knew that we just had to stick together and um, love on each other and cover for each other's weaknesses in order to be successful. And I think it just shows the like grit and heart that this team has. Um, we, it would have been really easy, especially when we were down a set or um, we're losing pretty badly, like Coach said, in the, the national championship just to give up. But I think um, God kept us calm in all of those moments for sure, and he helped us stay together, which really helped carry our team all the way through. Yeah, Eva, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I would go off of that too. Me and Abby are actually roommates and we were talking about this in our room afterwards and we were just um, kind of praising God because really we had a sense of calmness over our team, I think, especially in those last games. Um, we said more calm than we think we normally should have been, but I think it was really um, just a gift from the Lord and we just felt his hand on in those times. Um, same thing blessing of the people um i think on our team we just had so much heart and grit to wait for the people next to us and not just for personal um goals of getting to the end but we wanted the person next to us to win it and have that experience too so I think that's really what, um was able to push us forward especially in those tough five set or four set matches let me I ask think when you i'm oh, sorry coach, oh, go ahead. i was going to say when i think when you focus like they did on just the experience that they were having together with each other and the whole purpose and focus that we had all season was to honor the Lord. And they started focusing on the fun of just being together and playing together and honoring him. The winning component really wasn't talked about much. We never went into the locker room and go, we got to win. Okay. This is, this will take us into the semis. This will take us in the championship. It was just, let's go do these things and let's have fun and play with joy and, and continue to compete like we can. And here's the plan. You know, we're not going to go in stupid. We're going to go in with a knowledge. But it was like there there wasn't a lot of focus on the winning side. Like, oh, they didn't play to lose or not to lose they were just playing with the joy and i think it took care of itself to win well I, and i i did because you, you all mentioned this i, I was 
considering this, I, I listened to the championship on, on the radio broadcast and followed live stats. I didn't, I was not able to get to watch it uh, live anyway. And listening through that, of course, uh, trailing two sets to one in that championship match and, and Northwestern in that third set, it was just, it was just a, I mean, they had it going on in that third set. So yeah. I, I would ask you then for any one of you, uh, what, what do you say? I mean, you're talking about being calm, but what, what do you say to one another in a, in a situation like that? Do you remember? What did you guys say to each other? Um, yeah, before you guys, yeah. came, <laughs> before we came in and yeah. told you what we were thinking. <laughs> uh, obviously we talked tactically a little bit about what we needed to fix. I think a lot of it was our errors. And we knew that, so that also helped because we we fix what was happening. Um, but a lot of it was just pouring confidence out over each other, like turning to the person next to you saying, you know, we do this, we're better than this, we're a really great team, um, we believe in you. So just, I would say, doing that as a team really helped us in that set. Thank you for coming back from it. Yeah, we definitely all knew um, that we were a better team than that, and I think – um, like Ava said, telling each other that and then just knowing that you're playing for the person next to you and especially for our seniors, like we didn't want it to be um, their like last game ending on a loss. So I think we played for them too. And yeah. Well, let me let me wrap up our time. And I'm again, I'm so thankful for it. Thank you for taking time with us here on the summit. I appreciate that a lot. Um, as you look ahead now and and it's been a day or two, so you've had a little bit of time to let it sink in and, and you think about that red banner and think about what the rings are going to look like and, you know, uh, some of the fun things like that along the way because it, it's a real thing. It really happened, and, and there it is, more than just a dream that, that it's something that's real. You're, you're going to head into now the off season in a way that the program coaches never had the opportunity to do before. It's going to be a different feel to the off season. So I, I, I ask all three of you, what, what do you do now? Of course, you, you have some seniors on the team that uh, at least, and they go out uh, in style, but uh, you two are sophomores as well. So take us through the next couple of three weeks. Uh, what are you doing recruiting? And by the way, it has to be great for recruiting as well. Coach, uh, what, what do the next few weeks look like? Um, I'm, I'm going to give, because I'm a grinder and I work like way, way too much. Um, I told myself in uh, my father, that I was going to come home for Christmas and we're going to do everything fun that we could think to do and that we were going to enjoy our family and go and do just enjoy the moment with each other. And my, my father is, you know, eight years old. And so I want to tre treasure every moment that I can with him and, and just really, I'm not going to get caught up with, like all the pressure that might be put on myself to say, okay, I've got to do this, this, and this, because I really do believe that there is th this opportunity that came wasn't, um, oh, we've got to repeat this now. And I've got to like put this pressure on myself that we have to be another national championship team and that kind of thing. And we were only losing two people. So we should redo a repeat or whatever. I think, what I'm going to focus on is what did I learn through the season? And that takes time to step away from everything else. And what did God really teach me? And what were the stepping stones that I don't want to get away from? I want to keep in my heart. And how can I even make it better for him? And so that's what I'm going to focus on in really more of the spiritual side of things. I do believe that God is going to honor and, and he will bring about the recruits. Um, I have two really good ones right now, so I'm not too stressed about um, getting a lot more people. But I do think that I'm really going to try to learn from what I learned this season and really try to continue to be a joy for these girls and, and help them have a coach that works hard for them and does everything they, that she can to help them win again, but also to love them well. Abby, I'll go back to you and, and let you, what, what, what do you think about the off season now? Of course, I, I think it's actually, it's pretty neat because coach should know that I mean, she, if, if she recruits well, she can get somebody that maybe never was a setter and turns into the, you know, setter of the league. So that, that has to be a promising thing, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I definitely think it'll be fun to um, go back and celebrate with our families too um, and just kind of let everything that happened sink in once we finish finals and everything. And then for the off season, um, I mean, obviously we have to keep grinding and um, just work every practice to get better and get even 1% better. I think we did a really good job this season of just focusing on the next game, the next practice, and not looking too far into the future. And I think that we'll continue that for the spring season as well. Yeah, Ava, do you, yeah. you skip finals? Did I skip finals? No, still have, no, no, no. I didn't, no, I didn't think you – that's why I'm asking. Do you still have finals ahead of you? I mean, uh, we're, we're talking right now into the evening. Do you all have finals that you have to be studying for? Yeah, we have finals next week. Okay. Well, tell, tell us about well, tell us about your off season then. No, yeah, I just think it's a great opportunity for us, like Abby said, just to keep grinding and working hard and not looking too far ahead of us. I think we have a team that um, isn't just comfortable with being okay. We always know that we can get better um, every day, so just bring that into the off season too, and just seeing where it got to us coming off of that. All right. Well, I listen, I appreciate so much that you all stopped by and visited with me tonight. And also, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the the culture and that you all are are doing your part to not only share joy, but to live it out and, and to be people who are examples of joy and, and uh, to see what something like that can do as it expresses itself on the court. So I, I appreciate your time, Coach Candace Motes. And uh, excuse me, Abby Porter. I want to say Abigail because I've seen that as well too. Abigail Porter, Ava Joldersma, national champions, Indiana Wesleyan here in 2023. Thank you all again for taking time with us today on the summit and congratulations and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I just want to say to you too that um, what you do in your platform with the summit, um, I have read many articles that represent some inspiring things and just my walk with the Lord too. I'm always looking for ways that different platforms can inspire me as a coach. And I have had many opportunities where I've seen and read different articles in your magazine. And I just want to say that I re I really respect what you're doing as well. And thank you for giving us the, the chance to be able to share our stories and just taking the time to acknowledge us. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Coach. Happy to do it. God bless you all. You too.